Okay, in this problem, we're looking at an Atwood machine variant where one of the masses is hooked up to a spring. So in the current configuration that's shown, the spring is relaxed, and we're going to release from rest from this position. It'll accelerate to some maximum stretch of the spring, and then it should spring back. Uh, part A is asking for the maximum stretch in the spring. So I know when I get to that maximum stretch, I'm going to have a speed of zero, and I'm going to approach this with energy conservation. So I just put in a little reference line where I'm going to say that y is equal to zero for measuring the position of m2. And that's where m2 ends up when the spring is at its maximum stretch. I'm just going to use an x to talk about that maximum stretch length. So y initial is going to be x, y final is going to be zero. And as m2 is falling, m1 is being dragged horizontally. And it ends up over here. And that is also a distance of x. Again, at the maximum stretch location, everything is going to be stationary right before this thing springs back. So all the kinetic energy terms in the energy conservation analysis will be zero. So let's get started. E initial equals E final. In my initial state, I have no spring potential energy. I have no kinetic energy. The only thing with energy is the gravitational potential energy of M2. So that's going to be M2 G X. In my final state, M2 is now at this low point where it has no gravitational potential energy, so that's gone. Again, everything is stationary because this is the turnaround point for the system. And all of my energy will be in this stretched spring. And it's been stretched by a distance of x, so it has an energy of 1 half kx squared. Um, I can cancel an x, and what I'm trying to solve for here is x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 and divide by k. I'm going to end up with x equals 2m2g over k. Plugging in the value of m2, and g, of course, is 9.8. And dividing by k, which we're told is 20 newtons per meter, I get 0.392 meters, or it might be nice to write that as 39.2 centimeters. In part B, I'm asked for the acceleration of the masses at the position of maximum stretch. So we're going to have to actually get into a force analysis on this. I'm going to look at M2 first, and I have, of course, gravity pulling down on it with a strength of M2g. There's an unknown tension in the string, and that's going to be pulling up on M2. Then if I go up and look at M1, the tension is pulling to the right on that mass. Sorry, I had that mistakenly labeled as M2 a second ago, so it's M1 just to make it clear. And then the spring is going to be pulling to the left with a strength of Kx. The acceleration direction for both of these is going to be back to where they came from because we're at the maximum stretch and we're going to bounce and turn back around. And I'm going to call that the positive direction for the analysis on each of these masses. So we get into our classic sort of analysis where I apply Newton's second law to each of the masses. For m1, that would be kx minus t is equal to m1a. And then for m2, it would be t minus m2g is equal to m2a. I can then add those two equations, and t eliminates, giving me kx minus m2g equals m1a plus m2a, and I'm going to factor the a out, so a times m1 plus m2. And that means a is kx minus m2g divided by m1 plus m2. So plugging things in, I have 20 for k. My stretch length at this point, I just solved for in part a, that's 39.2 centimeters, or 0.392 meters. M2 is 0.4. G is 9.8. That's all divided by M1 plus M2, which is 1.4 kilograms total. And when I run the numbers on this, I get 2.8 meters per second squared. So in part C, we're asked to calculate the stretch distance giving the maximum speed. So when we release this system from its initial configuration, the mass is sped up for a while, and then they started to slow down until they came to a stop at the maximum stretch position. So that transition between speeding up and slowing down, 
that's going to give you the maximum speed and the acceleration must be zero at that point um, just to justify this graphically real quick here's just a little doodle of a velocity function where it's increasing and then decreasing back down to zero and I can see that that point of maximum speed happens at a local maximum of the velocity function where the slope is zero so the acceleration must vanish so we're doing a force analysis where the acceleration of each of these masses is actually equal to zero at the moment of interest and that means all the forces must balance so if we look at m2 that would mean t is equal to m2g at this moment and if we look at m1 it means t is equal to kx at the moment of interest so we just figured out that at the moment where i have maximum speed m2g is going to be equal to kx and i can solve for x and i get x equals m2g over k which is 0.4 times 9.8 over 20 and I get a stretch length of 0.196 meters or 19.6 centimeters and notice that there's a nice symmetry to this problem that the maximum speed occurs exactly halfway along the path to the maximum stretch so that 19.6 is exactly half 39.2 all right let's find the maximum speed at this point I'm going to go back and use energy conservation again, except now I'm using an x value of 19.6 centimeters. So I can still use my old diagram. It's just that now I know my initial height is going to be 19.6 centimeters above the height at the moment of interest, which I will again call zero. And again, this stretch is going to be 19.6 centimeters to get to the moment of interest. So let's apply energy conservation. E initial equals E final. In my initial state, it's all gravitational potential for that hanging mass, M2G Y initial. In my final state, the gravitational potential energy of that guy is zero just because I put my origin of coordinates there. Um, I have two kinetic energy terms, so one half M1 V squared plus one half M2 V squared. And I have some energy stored in the spring, which at this point is stretched 19.6 centimeters. So it's going to be a 1 half kx squared for this stretch to get to the moment of interest. Um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by 2. And I'm going to subtract the spring potential energy term from both sides because I'm trying to solve for v. So I end up with 2m2gy initial minus kx squared equals m1 v squared plus m2 v squared well that's really m1 plus m2 times v squared and i'll go ahead and write down the solution for v real quick i would divide by m1 plus m2 and then square root so i have 2 m2 g y initial and that y initial value and the x value here are both the same number it's 19.6 centimeters and then divided by m1 plus m2 and then square root the whole thing Plugging in numbers, I end up with 2 times 0.4 times 9.8 times 0.196 for y initial minus 20 for k times 0.196 squared divided by the total mass, which was 1.4. And I get 0 0.741, just keeping three sig figs, meters per second. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.